s- pretty much in one studio. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. And I was controlled a lot. Um, I was with a major record label then, not with an independent. And I was told, do it this way, do it that way. You have to sound like this person. You have to make this sound and uh, pretty much controlled. Whereas this album um, is pretty much 100% me or about 90% me. Um, hence why it's called Ironic. The title yeah. of the album is called Ironic. And um, I pretty much went in the studio, done how I wanted it to sound, and it's me. It's hundred percent how I always have, have, you know, structured a record. And um, yeah, it's just great, ironic music. Because you're in a totally different situation now. You know, yeah. you're on a your new label, which is BPM. BPM. Yeah. And um, it's made by two top guys from the industry yeah. who've kind of put it together. So yeah. that that was something I wanted to know about. You know, how's it different being on an independent yeah. to the major? I mean, it's great. You know, um, uh. Major record labels, n- no offense to them, but they're they're in it for for business. You mm. know, th- that's their main thing. The good thing about the team around me right now is they're passionate about what we're doing. You know, they're passionate about um, the music we're making and the way we're releasing it. You know, my A and R is passionate about making sure you know it sounds right and m- before we put it out. Do you know what I mean? Mm, mm. Um, so I think that's just the main thing, really. Just passionate about it. So it's much better now. Yeah. So that's important, man. Yeah. Now, you worked on this album. You got Wiley on one of your tracks. Uh, tell us a little bit about that one. Wiley isn't on this new album, no. Oh, he's not made it onto no, this no, album? No, he was on my last album, yeah. Oh, okay. Not on okay. this. Now, um, there's something... See, I told you I was going to find something <laughs> funny on this, right? Now, on your bio, if you have a look over there, yeah. I'll underline it. It says, Ironics admirers include Tom Cruise, yeah. Prince Charles. <laughs> Explain this, bruv. What's this about? I mean... I don't know. I doubt you know. I doubt he sits <laughs> there. I mean, I met Tom Cruise at the National Movie Awards. I performed there last year. Hmm. Um, I opened up the show at the National Movie Awards, which was a blessing. You know, performing in front was, of was was Katie there. Katie was there. Katie She's was looking, there. Looking she was looking nice. Yeah. <laughs> I must say. Um, you know, Chris Rock was there. Jonathan was she allowed Ross. to speak? Look, I, do you know what? I didn't even get to say hello to her. You know, I was so starstruck about being in front of Tom Cruise, yeah, I forgot yeah. about Katie. Oh, man. <laughs> so, no, so let me tell you. So I was in the National Movie Awards, performed on my show, hmm. went to the dressing room. You know, you fi- I'm finished the show now so I can have some wine. So I had a couple of glasses of wine, chilling, sitting back. And then the next thing I know, I see this entourage come past my dressing room. Hmm. And it's Tom Cruise, this short guy, really, yeah, really yeah, short. Yeah. And these big guys behind him, and he's walking past. And I'm, I'm like, pretty scared. It's like a movie. Like, you know, <laughs> everyone's like, move out of the way, move. And then he <laughs> stops, and he's like, hey, hold on, hold on. And he comes in the dressing room, and he's like, hey, nice to meet you. You've really, you done really well out there. And I was just starstruck. I didn't know what to say. So I was like, oh, man, this is Tom Cruise right here. Yeah, what did you say? I was just like, man, thanks a lot. Pleasure, good to meet you. And that was, you know, the whole 40 seconds of our conversation. You did like say, yeah, yeah, wicked. Uh, Still Magnolia was whack, but anyway. (laughs) No, I didn't even say that still. But it's just, that's probably, you know, I was just starstruck. That's the only time I've ever been starstruck. I even forgot to say hello to Katie. So that's what happened there. Um, I doubt he sits at home and listens to my album, but yeah. You never know, man. You never, <laughs> never know. know. He um, might have it in his car. You never know. Exactly. <laughs> and Prince Charles, I'm an ambassador for the Prince's Trust. So I met Prince Charles a few times and I, I received Christmas cards from him. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty big, man. Yeah. That's pretty. That's a Twitter. That's a little Twitter thing to <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Now every year I send a little tweet saying <laughs> thanks Prince to Charles. Prince Charles. Thanks for the card, mate. You know? <laughs> yeah, it is. <too, laughs> <bro. laughs> yeah. So, um... Now, with you moving ahead, what kind of uh, shows can we expect from you? Is there anything planned? Is there a um, tour going to happen? Yeah, yeah. We've got an exclusive free gig um, that I'm doing in London, which is going to be uh, limited tickets for, for about 200 people, mm-hmm. um, which I'm going to be showcasing my whole new album there. Um, that's So uh, we've got that coming up, which is going to be great. Um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be... You know, I'm always performing. I, I perform all year round every year, you know, mm. whether I'm DJing or performing, I'm always doing it. So I'll be performing somewhere in someone's city, so... Yeah, wicked man. Now tell us about the DJing because that's something that people, a lot of people, um, especially that I talk to out in Radio World, you know, they yeah. know your name's DJ Ironic. Yeah, some people kind of think like called... it's an artist title. They yeah. don't believe it. Yeah, no. Nah, I mean, I started out as a DJ. That, yeah. That's my first love. I started out as a DJ at 13, and that's you know that was years back. So you can only imagine I'm not a whack DJ. You know, yeah, I've been yeah, DJing yeah. since I was 13. I don't, I don't just put on a record and just you know fade it in. I actually can mix. So I still love to DJ. Um. You know, I, I go out to the clubs and DJ sometimes and, st- you know, still love to DJ. So. so you don't do the kind of Westwood style of DJing, which is play a track, <laughs> turn it down, drop oh, bombs, man. play it Oh, man. No, no, no. I'm about the mixing, man. I'm about the mixing. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, 100%. Man. 
Like a DJ's DJ, isn't it? Exactly. Then, then like we understand. And, but when I say that, people don't believe me. So you're you're gonna have to come out and see me DJ one time, people. Yeah. Yeah, man, we should do a little gig together. Yeah, yeah, back to back, little back. I don't want to shame you up too much, but we should. <laughs> nah, I'm I goes in, man. I'm but crazy. it's good because I mean, when I'm not on promo for records, if I'm not finished, if I'm not making an album or a single, I can just go on the road and do my DJ side of things. You know, mm -hmm. I, that's the whole life I live, either DJing or producing or writing. So it's cool. So how do you break it down? CDs, vinyl, CDs. laptop. CDs. CDs yeah. yeah, I used to do vinyl. I still got loads at home. My first vinyl was Craig David Rewind. I remember. Big record, yeah. And now I'm on CDs. No Serato. I can't do that. No. God, so you'll you'll love it, bro. You will. You want a Serato, yeah? Yeah, man. I just bought the S. Nah. I've just upgraded Has your computer it today. ever uh, broken down while you're in a club? I got a Mac, so. Yeah, you never, can you can depend on Max, but you got a PC. It's not. It's yeah, not yeah. Long. But I still, I'm not 100 percent trusting that. Because <laughs> like the level of creativity you can do. Yeah. Trust me, man. You'll love it. Now, the other thing is, um, you said that your life's changed a lot. And yeah. That's, and that's something that I think is interesting. Now, this new album has been described as being a lot more suave, yeah. a lot more classy. Yeah, yeah. Now, what was classy to you in 2007? And what is classy to you now in 2011? What's classy to me now? I'm, I'm more... I'm a gen I've grown up a lot, obviously. I was 19, 20 then. Um, I'm 23 now. I'm a gentleman. Mm. Um, I've experienced all types of women, you know, so you can, <laughs> but, you know, so you can just, so my style is just like suave and just, you know, just a bit more mature, maybe mature is the right word. So mature, um, songs and records you'll hear from me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the vibe of the album. That that's the vibe of the album. Putting yeah. across. Now are you, you, you talked about women. Are you dealing with someone at the moment no. or is ironic ready to meet? I mean, I'm a hundred percent single. And, you know, I like to be single. I used to like to be single. I, I used to love being single. Is it a lot harder now? Do you find the type of women that no, attract you? No, of course it's you? not. I love it now. It's a lot easier now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I've recently moved house. I live by myself now. Mm. And uh, I sit down at night and then I watch a film and I, because I like rom-coms and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then, and then I, I sit back and I think, and then I listen to slow songs and like, nice music. I think, man... I need a girlfriend, yo. Like, <laughs> recently, I've only thought, you know, I need a girlfriend. So I'm kind of, I don't know, I need someone, I think. I know my uh, my, my pimp friends are probably going to slap me off after for saying that. Because if you're watching rom-coms, you need yeah. a girl next to you. Yeah, exactly, it's of course. It's not about so. that, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, we call it ironic. Cool, man. Thank you very Thank much you, for sir. talking to us today, Thanks man. Thanks for being here, man. Cool. It's Illatech Westside FM, signing yep, yep. out.